Hey there, are you wondering how to build the memory card matching game in Java? If your answer is yes, you are in luck because you just landed in the right tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to build a memory card matching game using Java and Java FX. This is the third section of the tutorial. In the first section, we have seen how to set up a Java FX project and create the user interface. In the second part, we went over how to fill up our matrix with different images and how to set up listeners so the interface reacts when the user click on the cards. If you haven't watched the previous sections, I will highly recommend that you do so you can follow along easily. Alright, so after a quick recap, let's see how this video is going to be organized. First, we will extend the listener we started creating earlier. We will change it so after a user click on a car, the image behind the car is displayed. And after, we will see how to check if the user found a matching pair after clicking on two cars. So, if you click on two cars that are equal, we will mark them as guests. Otherwise, if the cars are different, we will turn them over. So, in other words, we will render the question image again. Perfect. So, without further ado, let's get started. We are going to start in the car listener method. So, what should this method do? At this point, we know the location of the card that was clicked because we have that information in a string. So I will convert this test to numbers. Then I will use the matrix we created before to find out the image behind the card. And then I will render the image. Perfect, so let's write that in Java. I will do a split and then split the stream by the comma and grab the first part of the string, which is the row. Then I will convert this string to a number type using integer.parseIntegr and save the result in a variable. And I will do the same for the column, so instead of grabbing the first part of the string, I will grab the second part of the string. And now to find out the image behind the car, I will say bore.bore and then the selected row, then the selected column, and then I will access the value, which could be a diamond, heart, circle, or any of the others. So now that we have the value, we will access the image file so I will say file input stream and then the folder where we have our images. In this case, I have put the image files at the root folder. So the images are at the same level than the SRC folder. So, once we have the image file, I will wrap it in an image object and then I will say source component, which is the image view that was clicked and then I will say set image and then the selected image and that's all. So let's run this and check if it works. And as you can see, as I press the different cards, the images behind are displayed. However, that's not exactly how a memory game works. For this game to work as we expect, when you click on two images, if the images are different, then the image should be hidden again. To do this, we are going to add two new fields to our app controller class to keep track of the cars that are displayed. In other words, the cars that are facing upwards. 
both fields will start with the value null and when I click on the first car I will assign the cell selected to the first car and when I select the second car I will assign the cell selected to the second car field then next time I click on a car if the two cars are not null meaning that there are two cars face, facing upwards I will check if the cars are equal and if so I will mark them as guess and if they are different I will hide the cars again rendering the question image instead alright so let's write that in Java so let's add two fields to the class app controller which are gonna be called first car and the type will be cell same as the type that we are using in our matrix and another field with the name second card now to keep things separated and well organized I'm gonna create a method in this class which I'm gonna call check if matching pair was found this method is going to take as parameters the row and the column selected. This method is going to be called every time a car is clicked. So I will call it from our car listener method. So we said if the car press is the first car, we will save the cell in the class field. So we know that the first car was pressed. So I will say if first card is null meaning no card was pressed yet and therefore all cards are facing downwards then i will get the cell that was pressed which is bore dot bore then the selected row and the selected column and i will save it in the field which is first card then we will say else if so if the first card field is not null and the second car field is null this means there is only one car facing upwards and the user just pressed the second one so i will save the matrix cell selected in the second car field and otherwise if the first car and second card are null it means that there are two cars facing upwards and we just press the third one so at this point we can check if the cars that are facing upwards are equal and therefore a matching pair so to check I will say if first car dot value is equal to second car dot value then we need to mark the cards as guess in our matrix and leave them facing upwards so to mark them as guess I will say bore.bore and then the row and the column of the first card and I will assign false to the was guessed field so now we have recorded in our matrix that the first card was guessed so I will do the same for the second card field this is in case we found a matching pair but what if the cars are different in that case we should hide the images to do so first thing we need to do is to work out the image view that we need to update we can access the image view through the grid panel which are recorded in a list therefore the first thing we need to do is given a row and a column to work out the position of our image view in the list so I will say first card dot row multiplied by 6 which is the number of items in each row and plus the column so first card dot column this will return the index of the image view that corresponds with the first card so now we can just access that specific image view and then update the image so i will say game matrix dot get children's and then get and the index that we just work out 
Then I will cast it as an image view. And then I will say set image. And here, since we are hiding the image, I will load the question image file and then pass the question image as the parameter. Then I will do exactly the same for the second card. First work out the index and then access the image view through the grid panel and update the image with the question image. And then update the card or the image view with the question image. And there is one last bit left that we need to change. At this point, we have two cards upwards and the user has clicked on the third card. So apart from working out if there was a matching pair, we need to update the first card and the second card fields. So I will say first card equal to the cell in the matrix that was selected. So board dot board and then the row and the column. And then the second card field is null since the second card is not facing upwards yet. And that's it. That's what we have to do to complete the listener and get the memory game working. Let's test it out and make sure everything works. And amazing, as you can see, when we click on two cars, if they are different, the cars turn over. And if they are a matching pair, the cars will remain facing upwards. Amazing work. Well done if you got to the end of this three section tutorial. For any question, please feel free to send a comment below. I haven't explained how to get the start the game button working just because I wanted to keep the tutorial simple and as short as possible. However, if there is uh, anyone interested in seeing that, please send a comment below and I will do my best to make a video about that. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you find it useful and if you do so, please consider subscribing. And this is the end of the video. I will see you in the next one.